In this video guys, we are gonna look at why sitting on your hands makes you the most money. Stick around. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. All right, so, okay. This is obvious, but sometimes obvious stuff glares us in the face and we go, why am I not even doing that? Uh, and that is that when we take a trade, there's two outcomes. There's a, there's a third outcome of nothing, but very rare. Um, oh, this is not so rare, maybe you just stop to break even. Let's use three outcomes then. You make a profit, you make a loss, you, make, you go back to break even, you make zero. Those are your three outcomes from the trade and that's it. When we go into a trade, we're expecting to make money. We often have a stop loss in, but we go in there with the intention of making money, right? We go in there and say, right, I wanna make $1,000 from this trade, I wanna make 100 bucks from this trade, or whatever you're trying to make from the trade, that's what I wanna do. And we have a stop in there. We don't go in there expecting to lose. And so we look at trades as a, and go, How, what attributes does that possess that think I'm gonna risk this to make this? And that's the decision-making process that we make. The danger we have as traders is that we do this too much. We basically say to ourselves, okay, I'm gonna take this trade because I wanna make this thousand dollars. And even though we might put a stop loss in, even though we might do this, we don't think of the consequences of taking multiple trades that don't work, they're just substandard. We go, okay, well, I've accepted my risk. You know, I'm risking 250 bucks on this trade, it's a four to one, or whatever it may be. Fine, I'll do this, I'll do that. And we don't think, hang on, if, but if you start doing this too much, you're just throwing 250 bucks down the drain, down the drain, down the drain, down the drain. Before you know it, it's two and a half, it's five, it's 10, and you've got to claw a lot back. So this might seem obvious that like you could win, you could lose, you could make nothing. But thinking about this a little bit more deeply is important because very often we think of where's the next winning trade? 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 That's all we're focused on. We're looking at it through the lens of I want to find a winning trade. If we start to put the len different lenses on and say, okay, I want to look for it and make sure that I'm minimizing the losers, that has a significant impact on PL. And actually, it's easier to do, I think, than finding the winning trades. It's just watching out for those devastating losers or losing periods that, 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 that decimate, not decimate, or at least draw down the equity curve. It's a rough example here, right? Week one, week two. Say you're a day trader, you're trading every day. First day, thousand bucks, plus 200, minus 200, plus 100, and on Friday, you do plus 800. You use 1,700 bucks that week, fine. You're okay, you're reasonably happy. Week two comes around, Monday morning, bang, 2,000, you're out of the market. Nah, I hit my stop loss for the day, I'm out, that's annoying, frustrating. Then you're annoyed, you do minus 1,000, then you do plus 50, plus 100, plus 250. The market in this period here is just not offering you opportunity or you're out of sync or something, I and mean, we can go into the reasons why, but there's a point there where you go, hey, this is, this is silly. You know, I'm trading, I'm risking all this money and I'm trading and trading and trading and trading and trading and trading, trying to find a winner, trying to find a winner without any reference to the damage the losers could do. And I know this seems obvious, but we miss this point. We only go in thinking, I wanna make this, I wanna make this, and we don't think about the consequences of multiple losers and losers and losers, how that devastates the P&L. Look at this, you know, that's minus 2,600 on the, on, the, uh, on the week, minus 900 over the two weeks. You then gotta make a lot back. Let's say you're looking for 10 grand on the month, you gotta really push hard on three, three to four to get to where you wanna be. Now, if you'd sat on your hands and you had a very strict filtering system, then this may happen. You might have dropped this one off. You might have halved this. Let's say that was minus 500. And let's say you dropped this one off as well. You might have even dropped off this one because it's quiet. Maybe you dropped off this one, but they're even themselves out. So you're now left with the worst losers. I'm not saying you're gonna, you're gonna get rid of every loser. That's not feasible, but if you're very strict, as strict as you are at taking the very best trades, if you're very strict to look at the other side of that big length and saying, there's my losers, there's my winners. Now, look, there's my losers on this side. How can I minimize those? Let me focus and do a lot of work on minimizing those because we all look over there. We all look, I wanna make more money, make more money, make more money. And this is our blind spot. Those losers are our blind spot. They creep up and you go, damn it, man. I just had a massive good run. And all of a sudden, those have crept up and have bit me and I'm down over the two week period. Whereas if you focus on everything, I'm not saying ignore the winners, of course, we wanna maximize those. But if you focus and say, hey, are the conditions right for me? Is this, 
a good setup that matches my criteria or am I picking the best setup I can see at this moment in time? Let me repeat that because that's super, super important. And when this clicked in my mind, things were like, okay, that makes a hell of a lot of sense. So is this a setup that is aligned with your trading rules and your strategy and all the things you put down or is it the best setup you can see at that moment in time? There's a distinct difference because you might be in a really crappy market condition, really quiet, Monday stagnating. You're trying to force trades. You're like, okay, it's trade, it's Monday, let's go, let's go. Let's go on a five grand day, let's go, let's go, let's go. And you go, oh, oh that looks all right, I'll take that. Because you're looking with what you've got in front of you, you're picking what you think is the best that you can see there now. And so it's, it's way less, way less quality than what you normally take, but it's the best versus what you can see in front of you. Versus the other trader who comes in and says, right, I'm ready to go. I wanna, I wanna, do, I wanna put you know, 10K on the board today, fine. But I'm only gonna do it if I see this, this, and this. And then they sit on their hands and they wait and there's nothing, and there's nothing they're like, no. My standard for trade is up here the moment the market is here. I could go and fall into the trap of trying to find the best trade within that, but that's way below what I'm expecting of it, so I'm not gonna do it. So think about that. That's something to really think about and say, hey, is this the standard of trade I would normally take, or am I just picking the best of what is a bad bunch? And, and, and almost say to yourself, hey, the conditions and everything has to be up are below the watermark for me to even look. And that is why sitting on your hands is so important and can be something that makes you the most money. Because if you're passing on all these substandard trades and substandard days and substandard conditions, and then periods might last for a week or two or perhaps even more, and you're saying, okay, I'm not risking my capital. I'm not just going to lower my standards and find the best thing I can find at the moment in time. You just say, no, that's what I trade. That's what I'm waiting for. And if that means you're better, much better off, guys, going, all right, zero, zero, zero. Even if you took the whole week off and that was a zero week, you'd be in a way better position because on week three, you'd be 1,700 over. You'd have a week off. You'd be refreshed. You wouldn't have all this nonsense of back and forward. And then maybe the conditions come back in. You put another three, three on the board and the four on the board next week. All of a sudden, you're in 10K a month. Great, you're in line with what you're trying to do. That's the way to look at it. It's not a case of I'm just going to do everything all the time and just tr and trade whatever I see in front of me and just pick what I think is the best based on what I've got. That doesn't make any sense. You have a standard that you set. If the market is reaching that standard of volatility, of ATR, of setup, whatever you've got there for your rules, then fine, you pick the best trade. But if it's not, you discard it and you sit on your hands because you've got to look at the other side of that big string of trades. You imagine they're all lined out. You've got a worst loser up there, your best winner there. You know, don't let that sneak up on you and bite you when all you're focused on is the biggest winner, the biggest winner, the biggest winner. Thanks, guys. Take care. Appreciate all your support. Take care. Bye-bye.